What's going on, guys? So our little review this week is going to be on the Man's Super Frog. This is a pretty inexpensive frog. Um, has some features that I'm going to go over with you and uh, talk about my experience on the water with it and uh, compare it up against some of the other more popular frogs that are on the market. So check it out. All right, guys. So the Man's Super Frog. If we go to Tackle Warehouse here, they show seven different colors and. Uh, they don't have much of a description here about, about the frog. I guess they don't have a lot to say about it. And then if we go to man's website, the same thing. They've only got a couple lines worth of description and the same seven colors worth of, uh, worth of frogs there. It uh, comes in one size. They do have a swimming version of a hollow body frog, but this one's just a little bit different. Uh, and this has a length of two and a half inches, a weight of what the website says is three eighths of an ounce, and I'm not sure if I believe that. Um, it is a hollow body top water floating frog. So uh, go ahead and get, give you guys a measurement. Uh, the body of the frog with the line tie is about two and five eighths inches. And then with the skirt material, the skirt material is about two inches. So if you add all that up, it's about four, a little over four and a half inches. Now the skirt material here, you guys, very, very thick. Um, let's go ahead and show you a Spro Bronze Eye Frog. Even though it's different material, this is silicone and this is rubber. Uh, very, very thick, you guys. This is over 40 strands on, on each side. So very full skirt where a bronze eye has it somewhere around 20 or something like that. And uh, I had a, um, what was it? The Evolve Nervous Walker frog, I think had 17 strands in it. So show you the Nervous Walker versus the Mans. I mean, the Mans is just very very thick now also about the skirt material it's already shortened up for you uh, in fact it's a little shorter than I like it but it's about perfect for the people that want to walk the frog and this frog really does a good job at walking the frog now I don't you guys know I, I, I don't really do a whole lot of that and I gave you the reason why in, the, in some of my last videos uh, but as far as walking the frog is concerned this is probably one of the easier ones to do it with just because of the fact that the script material is already shortened up for you it's a very low profile frog it's flattened out and everything about it just screams wanting to walk the frog the only thing that isn't conducive to walking the frog are the way that the back legs kind of jet out to the sides instead of going directly out the back uh, if they're going directly at the back, it just seems to give it a little less drag in the water and makes it a little bit more conducive to that, that darting from side to side. But nevertheless, it does a really good job because even when I was just out there popping it along, that thing was just kind of moving along like that. And I wasn't even trying to walk it or anything like that. I was just trying to get some, some attention just by popping it along real, real slowly out there. Now, the material of the frog, it's very soft. Um... It's actually softer than the copper's frog, which is um, a lot of people know as being a very, very soft frog. It's obviously, if it's softer than a copper's frog, it's softer than a bronze eye frog because a bronze eye frog is, uh, as soft as a bronze eye frog is, it's one of the thicker frogs that are out there. It's probably one of the more robust frogs, but it's a very thick frog. Now, on the flip side, the material of this is very, very thin. Now, I can't speak to the durability because I haven't had it for very long and I haven't fished with it very much. But as far as uh, durability for me in the short time that I've had it, the month or so that I've had it, it's been pretty good. I mean, as you can see, it looks good. There's no tears in there or anything like that. They, they both have some bass under, under their belt, so uh, they look fine. So, but as far as the, the material is concerned, it is thin. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Now, it comes with what the package says is a... Eagle Claw Premium Laser Sharp Twin Hook. So, and it is a very sharp, I mean, they're all sharp. You guys know how I feel about that, but it's a, it's a very sharp, strong hook. So I don't think you're gonna have any problems with that with that hook there. It does come with a rattle. The rattling system is, uh, it's actually, it, it's funny because it works very well. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear it that well here, but it does work well. It seems to transmit the sound very well through the water when, when you're out there, especially when you're popping it along, you can hear it very well. But it's primitive in the idea that it's just it's just two beads that are in there, like the beads that you would use on your Carolina rig. There's two purple beads in here. So it's nothing, to, not, nothing too spectacular, no, no glass 
systems in there, or glass warm weights or warm beads or warm rattles, whatever you call those things. Nothing like that. It's just a very simple rattling system. And I actually found it to be quite effective for people that want a, a rattle in their frog. That's a, that's a really easy way to get them. I mean, what do those things cost? Five cents a piece, 10 cents a piece. So if you guys want to rattle in there, I really never even thought of that. Just put that in there and uh, then you'll be on your way. Um, now let's talk about the finish of the frog. Now the frog is definitely not the most spectacular frog in the world. I mean, you look at it, I mean, just right out of the package, you would think that there was something wrong with it. I mean, the paint is kind of just run right, has, has ran in here in the middle. The eyes aren't put on there straight at all. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not the most attractive frog in the world. I mean, you look at it versus like this copper frog, which is strikingly beautiful for a frog. Um, I'm sure most people, if they had their pick, they'd pick the one on the left, but this one was very effective for me. I mean, I, I had several blow up strikes on both of these frogs and, uh, and caught a, a really nice one on this one. If you guys check out my fishing video, you'll see the frog or not the frog, but the fish I caught with, with this frog here. And, and back to the durability, I mean, you'll see that this frog, I mean, it looks great. There's nothing wrong with it or anything like that. I mean, it's just, it's in good shape. It, it was a good frog. So, and it's inexpensive, it's like $5. So for those of you guys that are on a budget, um, this seems to be a good all around frog. I mean, it's not gonna impress anybody by the way it looks, but it, it seemed to be very effective. So um, now let's talk about this thing here on the bottom. The, the only thing I can think about what this thing is here, because you can see the, the lead weight is right here underneath the hook and there's no weight in here. Um, you'll feel a little bit of thickness in here, but that's from the, the skirt material. I think it's tied up in a, in an overhand knot through here. So it won't slide completely through. So I think that what they did here was they brought this out. They build this out a little bit. So it won't, the body of the frog won't slide as easily across the hook there, which was something that I found. And from some of the comments that I read on Tackle Warehouse, some of these other people found that this frog seems to turn on this hook pretty easily, meaning that it, it, you'll come back and it'll be like this for whatever reason. I, I couldn't tell you why. And sometimes you'll find it punctured. You'll see that, that, that hook actually inside of it. And there'll be no reason for it. You, you won't understand why it happened. You didn't have any blow ups or anything like that. It just, it just happened that way. So I don't know why uh, I can't find any other reason why that's there, except for they're trying to help keep this thing from turning. So, and it didn't happen a lot, but it does happen. It also does take on water. It probably takes on water a little bit more than the average frog. So you're probably going to have to squirt the water out. Maybe every other cast, maybe every cast. It's not that big of a deal to me, but it's a big deal to some of you guys. So uh, I did find myself having to squirt the water out of there from time to time. So it is what it is. Also, um, you'll notice that where the skirt material comes out and also where the line tie comes out, normally it's kind of reinforced. It's like collared and belled out a little bit and very thick. You can see it on the spro frog. You see how thick the, the the body material is there and you'll see it here too around the around the line tie well on here it's not really reinforced it's not any thicker than the rest of the frog so I guess what I'm trying to say is that durability could be an issue with this frog in the future but it's still a five dollar frog and it still catches fish and it's got a good hook on it so uh, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that it's an inexpensive frog it costs half as much as this one and it costs half as much as this one. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the weight of the frog. The weight, it says 3 eighths of an ounce. It casts like a 5 eighths of an ounce or a 5 eighths ounce uh, frog. This is a 5 eighths ounce frog. It's about the same size and it casts just like it. I didn't have any issues with, with, with casting it and I, I believe that if it was a 3 eighths ounce frog, it wouldn't cast as well as it does. So what I'm trying to say is it's probably somewhere around maybe half an ounce, maybe close to 5 eighths of an ounce. So we'll talk about the colors here. Um, this color we have here is called Bullfrog. It's got a couple different uh, skirt colors in here, mainly chartreuse and white. And it's got a, a green on the back with some black flake in it, which isn't uh, reflective really at all. And then an overall white belly, which is the business of the frog, as we all know. So that frog is called 
Bullfrog. The last frog we have here is called Cypress Frog on Tackle Warehouse. It's spelled C-Y-P-R-E-S-S, -S, and on here it's C-Y-P-R-U-S. So that's what we're going to go with. Cypress Frog is essentially a green pumpkin red frog. It's green pumpkin with some black flake and some red glitter in it. And same thing, it's got some uh, different color skirt material on there with the orange and the green pumpkin. So there's Cypress Frog. Alright guys, so I hope you guys like the review. If you guys have any questions, leave comments below. And if you guys like the video, please hit the like button down over here in the lower left corner. I appreciate that. Uh, comment on your guys' experiences with the frog so we can all learn from your experiences and tell us whether you liked the frog or you didn't like the frog. Um, you have any questions about it or you want me to compare it up against something else, um, you want me to tell you about it, just leave me a message or send me a private message or leave a comment or something like that. I'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, we're going to try to do this... Uh, KVD Sexy Frog on the next review here, so stay tuned. Thanks a lot, guys.